right, so this is going to be a little bit of a departure from what I usually do on my Never Enough Ammo channel, but I'm also going to post this on the Mr. Matt channel as well. Today I want to do a little bit of a movie review on Dunkirk, all right? Now, the reason I want to do it and put it on the Never Enough Ammo channel as well is because this just tends to be the type of story that people like myself who are pro-gun or uh, pro-freedom and liberty and that kind of thing, this tends to be the type of story that we kind of like, that we just kind of get, right? So I wanted to kind of give you guys my review on it, my opinions on this movie. And that way, if you've seen it, well, you can hear somebody else's opinion on it. And if you haven't, you'll know whether or not it's something you want to go see or not, at least if you're going to base whether or not you want to go see a movie on my stupid opinion, all right? So first up, we have to, we have to say there's, there's going to be some slight spoilers in this, but understand this is a historical event. So, I mean, there's not too much to really spoil. Most of us learned about this stuff in school, at least I know I did. Um, of course, not anywhere near as much as I then later went on to research myself when I heard this movie was coming out. I had a very cursory knowledge, but in general, the story of Dunkirk is something that a lot of us already know because it really did actually happen. Uh, now, there's three aspects to this story we need to talk about. One is the historical aspect, two is the storytelling aspect, and three is going to be the characters themselves. Let's start with the historical aspect of this movie. Now, this is an incredible story of just true bravery on the part of average everyday citizens who put themselves in the middle of a war to save soldiers. I mean, that's basically what it boils down to. And just seeing what they did as civilians, seeing what the soldiers had to go through, it is just uh, truly an amazing story. And something just for that aspect alone this movie is worth going and seeing because it's just a it's a fantastic story it's a it's a story that shows you what human beings can do and are willing to do for their fellow man um, when they when they have to and and it's just it's a very inspiring story as far as I'm concerned and I think that in and of itself makes the movie worth seeing now as far as the storytelling aspect goes we really have to talk about Christopher Nolan um, I'm a fan of Christopher Nolan I like pretty much all the movies he's done all the way back to Memento um, big fan of that. I love the Dark Knight trilogy, even the last one. I like that one. Um, the Prestige is a great movie about magicians. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's an amazing movie. I love Interstellar. You know, I love Inception. Um, but Christopher Nolan likes to tell stories either in a very unique, kind of skewed way, or he likes to focus on subject matter in those stories that's very unique, right? Whether you're talking about a guy who forgets stuff every day, a guy that dresses as a bat, a, mu a magician, um, you know, uh, somebody who goes into other people's dreams, somebody who uh, goes through a wormhole in space to save the world. I mean, he tells very unique stories. And because of that, I don't really think that his storytelling style and the way he likes to look at skewed subject matter or just skew the way he films a movie to fit whatever subject he's he's doing a movie on, I don't think it fits very well with an actual historical event. He couldn't just tell a straight story of what happened and some of the characters that were involved. He had to put a twist on it. Um, now, I'm going to spoil a little bit here uh, in how he put this twist. Now, this is a twist that comes from the very beginning. Um, it's just how he tells the story. It's not a twist as far as, oh, look what happened. But he tells the story from three different chronological points of view. Um, the first one starts about a week before the civilian fleet shows up to get everybody off of Dunkirk. The next one starts a day before the civilian fleet shows up. And the next one, the third one, sh starts an hour before the civilian fleet shows up. And it just, it doesn't fit. It really kind of feels out of place. And, and I'll give you a great example of how that happened. There is uh, several points in the movie where you see the same thing from different points of view from those different chronological points in time as far as when the story progresses to that point. So you'll see it coming up in one of the storylines and you'll see an event happen. Then as we're going through the next storyline, we'll see that same event happen from just a, another point of view, a different camera angle. And it's supposed to be the, the point of view of these other characters we're fo focusing on. And then we'll see it from a, a third point of view later on in the story. And the first time or two that happens, it's kind of cool and it's kind of unique. By the end of the movie, it almost felt like, and I know this wasn't what Christopher Nolan was going for, but it almost felt like they were just trying to kill time in the movie, just 
fill up minutes because you're literally seeing the same thing happen over and over and over again. And after a while, it just started to feel like a gimmick, just a, a way for Chris Nolan to say, look at this unique storytelling that I've done. You know, I've taken this subject matter and twisted it into a way that's more interesting, but it really wasn't more interesting. It was different. It was a twist, but I think the story suffered from non-linear ish storytelling. Um, so I, I kind of, that was kind of my biggest issue, quite honestly, with the movie. Still, from the historical aspect, I still think it's a movie worth seeing. Now, as far as the characters go, that was hit or miss for me, okay? Um, I liked a lot of it. I liked a lot of the characters that we saw actually on Dunkirk, the soldiers and what they were going through. I liked the characters that we had in the civilian fleet. I liked the characters we had who were the pilots, the British pilots. Um, I liked all the characters, but there were times when characters made really weird decisions that I just didn't understand. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them, but one in particular right at the end of the movie is a very, very strange decision that one of the characters make. I'm going to spoil it just a little bit here. Uh, if you don't want to hear this, fast forward about 30 seconds starting now. Um, basically, one of the pilots runs out of fuel and he's flying over the beaches of Dunkirk. He takes out a plane. He goes to open the cockpit because he's going to bail out, land on the beach with all the rest of the soldiers, let his plane just kind of fly off into the ocean where he can get off the island with all the rest of the military. But instead, he changes his mind. He closes the cockpit and just floats down the beach, miles and miles down the beach, where he lands on the beach, lights his plane on fire, and waits to get captured by the German soldiers. It just didn't really make sense given all that we had just seen from the same character, and now he just kind of gives up and lets himself get captured. It was really weird, and that happened a few times throughout the movie. Sometimes the characters just did things that didn't make sense. So, to sum up, from a historical aspect, it's an amazing movie and an amazing story. From a character aspect, it's mostly really good, but the characters do make some strange decisions. From a storytelling aspect, I think Christopher Nolan was off on this one, and he really should have gone with a more straightforward, linear way of telling this particular story. All in all, if I were to rate this like, you know, one to 10, I would probably give this about a seven, seven and a half. It's a good story. It's a good movie. I'm glad I went and saw it at the movies. I didn't feel like I wasted my money, but I definitely did have some issues with it. Uh, for those of you out there who like these war movies, this is a great movie, but it is certainly no Hacksaw Ridge, for instance. So, all in all, I'm glad I saw the movie. I thought it was a great story, but there are going to be some things in it that you might, just like me, find a little bit annoying. So there you go. That's it. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. You got any questions, comments, leave that stuff down below, and we will talk to you later. Thanks.